Hey internet, I am Udo ADHD. I want to talk about some shows that I'm really into about scammers, frauds, cults. I'm very intrigued by this kind of stuff and people don't really talk about it and I want to talk about it. I want to share some of my favorite shows and some of the most interesting ones and kind of the things that I learned from it. So I want to start with my favorite one. And by the way, what inspired this is this whole FTX debacle. If you don't know, FTX is the biggest crypto fraud in human history. Um, And the dude finally was arrested. So you can bet your bottom dollar they're going to make a docuseries about this. Can't wait. So in the meantime, let's reminisce on the other series that I've enjoyed. So the first one, this is my favorite one. This is one with re-watch value for me. It has Jared Leto, Anne Hathaway. They do a fantastic job. It's called We Crashed. It's on Apple TV Plus. And it's about WeWork. So if you don't know about WeWork, it's a it's a co-working space. And the founder, Adam Newman, he was so, he's just so he is Come with me and let's build the future together. What do you care about? So he is like inspirational. He's the best salesman in the world, in my opinion. And um, he sold a vision. He sold this vision of what we work like. I used to love WeWork. This was back when I was really into hustle culture and stuff. Like I really bought into that. And WeWork kind of symbolized hustle culture. It symbolized, you know, loving where you work. There's beer, alcohol, play games, you know, have fun, rowdy time while you're also getting work done and making money. Love it. Mind you, I'm also the girl who's for the longest time, my favorite movie was Wolf of Wall Street. I kid you not. This was my favorite movie. I was so into this kind of stuff. I was just so into it. I was so into this idea of just being wild and crazy, having the time of your life and making a bunch of money while you're at it. My name is Jordan Belfort. The year I turned 26, I made $49 I still like million, this dollars, which really pissed me off because it was three shy of a million a week. I, I still like this movie. I'm sorry. I freaking like, I guess... I like Leonardo DiCaprio and Martin Scorsese. I like this movie still, but I used to li- literally, this was my comfort film. I would watch it. So come with me. Yeah, I definitely, had I had the opportunity to work at WeWork, like not just rent the space, but be an employee, I would have done it. And I would have worked my booty off too. I would have done it. I so would have been in this company. So that might be part of the reason why I like this show so much is giving me an inside look. This show is just great. Of course, we have these actors who are fantastic. Anne Hathaway is oh, oh, just chef's kiss as usual, as friggin' usual. It's Anne Hathaway. <coughs> but it was also very entertaining. All of the crazy stuff you see in the show is real. The craziest things that you see in the show is not made up for dramatic effect is stuff that actually literally happened exactly so anytime so if you watch the show it's my favorite one of all the ones that we're talking about if you watch the show just remember what i said if you see something on the screen and you feel like that's a little too crazy go ahead and google it you'll see that it happened exactly that way it's so funny so i love this show and um so what i learned from it is (sighs) you can get away with anything If you're a good salesperson and you're likable, Adam Newman is likable. Adam Newman still has investors. He's still, yes, today, 2022, he still has people who invest in him. He is so likable and such a, he's so good at selling the dream, selling the vision, having you buy into something that doesn't yet exist. He's phenomenal. I think those are some good qualities to learn from. 
he took it too far. I mean, he's a big dreamer. He took it too far. Um, I wouldn't say, I don't, I wouldn't say he's evil. I don't think he's evil. I don't think he's bad. He is somebody who's insanely talented at recruiting people into his vision. And he takes it for granted and gets selfish, which many people are selfish. Most people are selfish or can be selfish. They put their self-interest first and that's what he does. It's just coupled with incredible talent for raising incredible money. A um, lot of red flags in WeWork. You know, how is a co-working space worth billions and billions of dollars? Like all of these frauds, there are red flags that people ignore. And I believe they ignored it because he's a great salesman, very likable. He has a lot of confidence. He has a lot of confidence in his dream and himself. That is a powerful combination that still works to the day. He has investors. I really enjoyed that this show incorporated the wife because when you read the story of WeWork, you don't hear nothing about the wife. And I believe that she was very influential. I mean, this is a man's wife. She's very influential. She was his muse. And um, that there's a little side story about her, you know, her vast insecurities. I mean, this woman is insecure. Jesus, very insecure. Um, and how that plays into things very interesting. I, I really enjoyed this one. This was a good one. Um, I, I think they did a fantastic job. Uh, I think you'll enjoy this one too. And uh, interesting to hear, learn a story. The other thing about Adam, he's smart. Okay. He's a master negotiator. He's so very confident in negotiating. And that's how he's still a very rich man. Even when they kicked him out of his own company, he managed to walk away with billions. Ain't that something? Oh, geez Louise. So that's Adam. That's We Crashed. Highly recommend it. Now, the next one, the next one I really, really like. I really like, um, we all know about Inventing Anna. We all know about Inventing Anna. So Netflix, if you haven't seen it, you got to see it. Uh, this girl, you know, Adam Newman didn't get a lot of backlash. You know what I mean? Like when I say backlash, I'm talking about the general sentiment. Obviously there are people who are like, oh, screw that guy, you know, um, obviously, but just the overall sentiment, don't feel too much negativity. Same with Anna Del, Del V. I don't feel too much negativity. In fact, she is memeable at this point. She's, and once you're a meme, you're liable to be considered uh, a skinny legend. Um, you have fans. She has fans. She has, she has all this. And I think what helped her do her cons, she played the let me be your perfect daughter role. This is a trope. We're going to see it again in the, um, another one. Um, I detest that the media wanted to paint her out as, as somebody who, who was able to scam because of her good looks. A lot of people did not find her to be attractive, nor did she dress well. A lot of people felt that she always looked disheveled. She was not attractive. Um, she was not sexually attractive. She couldn't, she wasn't visually attractive. She couldn't dress. I even saw people talking about how she smells bad. There are a lot of people who did not, were they were not drawn to her. People were not drawn to her. They weren't. They weren't. What they were drawn to was her facade of being an heiress with a bunch of money. A lot of people didn't believe it. A lot of people didn't buy it. Okay. So I'm sure New Yorkers who watched this show, who were in, who were in that scene, they probably felt like if you fell for her, you deserved it. You're a freaking idiot. Anybody could have seen through that act. So that's the sentiment I get. Um, also, a lot of people don't feel too bad. The individual that she scammed a lot of money from, very rich. People already don't have sympathy for rich people. I'm sorry. So if, if you're rich and you get scammed of money, people are not going to feel sorry for you. But that woman did manage to get her money back. Um, there's a friend. There's, there's a friend. There's a girl 
in this show, she gets scammed. People don't feel sorry for her either because people felt like you just wanted her for her money. You are as shallow as she is. So you really, you really have to be a saint. You have to be a poor destitute saint for people to feel sorry for you. But ultimately, the biggest scam was the banks. <clears throat> she defrauded those banks and nobody gives a damn about the banks. Nobody's going to feel sorry for banks and that's fine. But um, <clears throat> I detest that um, a lot of the media was trying to say that she used her sex appeal. She didn't. She used her youth appeal. And what I mean is, and I like that the show played on that. The show did not, the show didn't fall for the media. Mis is it misogyny? I kind of feel like it's misogyny. I feel like it's kind of misogynistic to assume sexuality because she's female. I, I don't like that. You know, we got, we get enough, like we get enough crap for existing. Like this idea that if you exist as a female, you are inherently sexual and sexualized. I don't like that. No, I think what she did is what was portrayed in, in the film as well, in the docuseries, in the docuseries or just series. Um, these people, she reminded them of their daughter, the same thing as why do you think the judge who sentenced Ted Bundy complimented him? The judge who was sentencing Ted Bundy complimented him, said, I wish I could have seen you as a lawyer in my courtroom. You know, why does this stuff happen? It's because you, you are reminding these old people of their children you they connect with you because they feel like you could be my son you could be my daughter that's what Anna did and it's not it's not a tactic that's discussed often or shown in the media often but it will get you it will get you far play the kid role and to some of the bankers and the investors and some of these people, she played the kid role. She played that role of, man, I'm the same age as your daughter and your daughter's doing shit all. Meanwhile, I'm trying to start a foundation and do something meaningful for the world. I mean, who would you rather be giving money to? Would you rather be giving your daughter an allowance to go party? Or would you rather help a young person help make the world better for the next generation? play that play you can play that role when you're young um and I think that's how she did it and she didn't need many people to believe in her right a lot of people didn't believe her a lot of people thought she was full of crap didn't like her you don't need many if you got a few in your pocket with a lot of money you can pull off a scam like that so this one was entertaining very interesting I think Julia Garner she did a fantastic job I don't want to hear nothing about the accent. The accent is supposed to be weird. If you listen to the real Anna Delvey, she has a weird hodgepodge accent. Okay. I think you did great, Julia, as usual. Um, I mean, I will never get over this line. You know, we really don't have time for this. What else are you lying about? Who the fuck are you? I do not have time for this. I, I do, do not, not have, have time, time for you. you love it okay <clears throat> so the next one i want to talk about <clears throat> the dropout this is about elizabeth holmes who she is going to jail now we know she's going to jail so this is about um it's actress amanda seyfried's startling transformation oh, into inside the edition from the copyright to eliminate the tubes and tubes of blood listen so this is about theranos if you don't know about theranos it was um supposed to be a Theranos machine in every home prick your finger get your blood work done in your own home that was the vision she was selling I also resent what the media said about her they said she used her sexuality to get this funding now she did have a rich boyfriend um you're nasty Sonny his name is Sonny and you're nasty you were like double triple her age and you met her when she was like just graduating in high school. Like you're so like, what did you expect? I'm sorry. When it comes to people who date, it's not even, the, it's not the age gap that's an issue. 
The issue is you're dating somebody so very naive. And you know that. And that's why you're dating them. And you're so old. It's not like your age. It's not like you're also naive or you just got out of that phase. You are so old. You're in a completely different phase of life. If you if you get into relationship troubles, I just kind of feel like, what did you expect? You're dating a teenager. You're dating a 20 year old. Did you expect them to be able to take the high road? Did you expect them to be the pinnacle of maturity? Yeah, teenagers do stupid stuff. You chose to date one. Stupid is a stupid does. That's my feelings on that. To Sonny's credit, he did try to stop her. He did try to stop the fraud a couple of times. I'm interested to see how much time in prison he gets. But the media, so in that way, you could say, oh, she used her sexuality to get funding because Sonny was rich. Um, I mean, they were dating. They were dating. Uh, he came on to her first um she was feeling vulnerable so yeah the guy who likes you is gonna come in and save the day so i don't see that as using her sexuality for the money as for the other investors i don't think she used her sexuality and and i really resent talking about oh well she's so young and so beautiful i, I mean how side the sorry. dropout the um hold on favorite place to visit Hold on, that's that's the that's the actress. Okay, this woman, <clears throat> this young lady, who intentionally deepens her voice and wears turtlenecks and doesn't wear makeup. When she does wear makeup, she chooses like the wrong shade of red, like the so shade look, of red that like does not work for her. Tubes and tubes of blood doesn't Listen brush her hair. So You're telling me that this is a this is sex appeal that gets investors hot and ready. Get the f <laughs> I just don't believe it. And I just think that's so sad. Like she she intentionally did everything she could to not be sexualized. And here you are, media sexualizing her when that's not the case at all. She pulled a good old I'm your kid one. You know, isn't it so sad your grandson? Your grandson isn't doing much with his life, but me, I'm about to change the world. She did, she treated her investors like they were her grandparents. She made them feel comfortable. The thing about <clears throat> Amanda, no, I'm sorry, not Amanda Seyfried. Amanda, you did a great job. The thing about Elizabeth, okay, we have Adam Newman, very likable, great salesman. We have Anna Delvey, not likable, but she is, she is the kind of eccentric personality that a lot of people wouldn't like her, but there are people who will really like her. You get what I'm saying? There are people who really like her and people, people, I think people in general do have some level of respect for audacity. And she has quite a lot of that. Um, and she had audacity in a way that wasn't harming regular people. So she has fans. Okay. Um, yeah, she's doing interviews, a Anna Delvey, she's doing interviews with her ankle, like her ankle monitor on. And I'm sorry, I, I can see how that's a look. I can see how it's a look. Um, there's something about eccentricity that people like. That's why someone, even someone like Kanye West can still have people who really like him even though most people don't like him. And uh, you know what's funny about Kanye? A lot of people didn't like him for a long time. Like before all of this, people were already kind of checking out on him. I find that interesting. Anyway, <clears throat> Elizabeth Holmes, she did something that hurt regular people. She's not charismatic. She's not. She... She's not likable either. So Elizabeth Holmes, she gets a lot of hate. She does get a lot of hate. Um, 
dream isn't over yet. Oh, what is this? What did I just click? New. So there are things that Theranos was- And I'm, I'm sorry, Elizabeth Holmes, she comes off at, look at that thumbnail above my head. She, she looks very creepy. She looked creepy. Okay. I'm, you're not going to tell me Elizabeth Holmes used her sex appeal to raise money. Stop. <laughs> like, stop playing. Like, stop. Like, be for real right now, please. Please. If you're trying to tell me Elizabeth Holmes used sex appeal to get this money, then you're essentially saying any woman who exists in business ha somehow had sex appeal to get her money. Like, stop. Like, stop. Like, no, stop, stop stop like i get like no i do understand to some extent maybe they're trying to say she has blue eyes and blonde hair even if you look creepy even if you you do the she elizabeth does the blue eye thing when i say blue eye thing it's just it's just it's this funny thing on tiktok where people are putting this blue eye filter on and they're like this is how you look when you have blue eyes. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I've seen, I, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Like when people have blue eyes, very light colored eyes, like they, they keep their eyes open, like so open. <laughs> Elizabeth does that. Okay. It's, it's creepy. However, there is still this uh, unconscious bias people have towards blonde hair and blue eyed people. There, there's actually a few studies. It kind of shows that when someone has blonde hair and blue eyes, you feel like you have to protect them. You're more likely to feel the need to protect them versus someone who looks like me. Dark hair, dark eyes. Um, <clears throat> and so this goes for, this goes for, and like, yeah, even with my skin tone, if I put on a blonde wig and blue contacts, I now evoke that weird protective sense there needs to be more studies done on this there is a fascination with blonde hair and blue eyes it doesn't matter you don't have to be hot you don't have to be attractive you can look like the grim reaper as long as you have blonde hair and blue eyes there is something that society will feel like they need to treat you a little special so maybe that's what the media was trying to say, but that's not, let's not call that sex appeal. Okay, I'm done with my little rant. I think the dropout was very interesting. I thought it was good. Um, and um, it shows how effective that kid thing can work when you play that angle of, you know, let me take care of you. You're like my granddaughter. You're like my baby. Let me take care of you. When you play that angle, it's like they want to trust you so bad and they believe you. And even if the, even if it's right in front of you, the numbers don't lie. It's right in front of you. You don't want to believe it because now you have to admit that you fell for it and you were stupid. Okay. Same thing happened with Adam Newman. Um, a lot of his investors, they didn't want to believe it. They didn't want to believe it. Some of their investors didn't want to believe it. And some of his investors, they felt like they had already put so much money in that they don't want to back out. What, because what if he pulls through, what if he makes it happen? They don't want to pull out. So that's very interesting. Um, let's talk about the next one I liked. The Shrink Next Door. This is a true story. There's a podcast called The Shrink Next Door, but Paul Rudd and Will Ferrell, they do a phenomenal job uh, fictionalizing kind of the story. an identity crisis. Ike is feeling a lack of fulfillment with being a therapist, and Marty is really ill-equipped. deserve it. Again. I deserve, deserve it. it. Feels good, doesn't it? So basically this psychologist um, takes over his patient's life. Um, I think this show, if you want to understand how people can get sucked into cults or abusive relationships or anything like that, watch the first three episodes of this show. 
it's it's just a perfect example. And Paul read like, my God, fantastic job. I was triggered throughout this film, uh, this this series. And that's I say that as a good thing. I say that's a testament to how good Paul Rudd is. Um, when I say I'm tr- I got triggered, what I mean is he was so realistic that it unlocked memories of the times I've been with manipulators or dealt with manipulators. There's this one look, there's the first time he was, trying to tell Marty, that's his patient, to do something that Marty wasn't comfortable with. So Marty was like, I don't know about this. He gives him this up and down look, this kind of disapproving. It's a look that says, I thought you were better than this. And he just does it so good. It's not like I've seen actors try to do that look before, like, and it comes off kind of Disney Channel acting. But Paul did it in such a way that I'm like, oh, my effing Jesus that's exactly what it looks like I don't know if he just unconsciously did that or what but anyway kudos to you Paul Red. you triggered the heck out of me which means you did a great job being a believable manipulator um the show kind of falls into this rhythm where the psychologist suggests something clients uneasy a psychologist does a manipulative tactic clients like you know what okay yeah let's do it so it falls into this rhythm so it kind of gets like come on come on it kind of gets like that um so I can see if if people weren't enjoying the whole show that would be why it kind of gets like too predictable but when you find out it's a real thing that happened it's like oh oh damn so it starts off you know you're having issues with something. Um, somebody recommended that he see this particular psychologist for his anxiety. And the psychologist helps him. You feel good. You feel empowered. You actually got some tangible help here that worked. And now you want to listen to this person because this person obviously knows how to help you. And you've been struggling with certain things doing it your way hasn't worked all this time. Let me do it his way. So even if it's something you're not comfortable with, you know what, let me give it a try. You know, this person has helped me majorly before. Let me do it their way and see if it works. Um, What's not shown in the show that I think they should have done, I think they didn't add it because they wanted the psychologist to be more likable. But... In reality, the therapist, the psychologist would. No. No, I can't have these flies in this new house. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh, I gotta take the trash out. No, 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 no. You know those little nasty gnat flies? I hate those. Oh my god, I have to take the trash out. Okay, so anyway. Oh, before it gets too much. Uh, I hate them. I hate those little things. So anyway, in real life, the therapist would say, the psychologist would say, I can't help you anymore if you're not going to do exactly what I say. If you're not going to do what I say, and you're just going to do it your own way, then you need to find a different therapist. And you don't want to find a different therapist because this therapist helped you. So let's do what he says. Eventually, it turns into 27 years of taking over this patient's life. I mean, overcharging him, uh, setting up businesses in each other's name, setting him and his, the psychologist and his wife as the patient's beneficiaries, you know, for life insurance and, and stuff like that. Like, it got to the point where he had this home in the Hamptons And the psychologist was using it so much and had all of his pictures there that when the patient would say it's his house, everybody looked at the patient like he's crazy. Like nobody would believe it's his house. People thought the patient was just like his butler or maid or something. Anyway, it's crazy. I think it does a good job showing how you can get enticed into something like this. 
and why you would stay. It shows the the how stupid you feel for not trusting your gut, uh, for staying in. And even when you finally have the courage to get out, you've isolated yourself. You've blocked off everyone in your life. Everyone in your life is upset with you or you've made it clear you don't want them around so they're not coming around. Now you're all alone and you're so tempted to go back to your manipulator, your abuser. It shows all of that. I think they did a good job. I enjoyed it. I mean, I, I think somebody, I saw a criticism that Will Ferrell, he made his character too sheepish. Uh, yeah, his character is more sheepish than the actual guy is based on, but I think it works for the film. I think it works to evoke the, the feelings that need to be evoked in such a short series. I enjoyed this one and it was quite enlightening for me. Um, you know, even though I've been through this kind of thing before, I saw new things that I didn't pick up before. And, um, and I really, I really enjoyed the discussion I've had based on that. So another one I didn't really care for super pumped. It's on Showtime. Oh, so the shrink next door is on Apple TV plus, um, the dropout is on Hulu. This super pumped is on Showtime. I mean, it's interesting. It's, it's about Uber. Uh, I love Uber story. Um, the dude, I, this dude was doing some scam in order to get Uber up and going. He got kicked out. Uh, I think it was interesting. It's just, I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. If you're going to watch it for one reason alone, do it to see Uma Thurman play Ariana Huffington. She, this character is the definition of female domination you know there's this whole like connect to your feminine energy your divine your feminine divine rest in your femininity this whole thing going on with the girls online this show isn't popular enough if it was more popular they would be analyzing the hell out of ariana huffington's character here my god so graceful. I wish I'm not like that. I'm very brute force or what they would say masculine. Um, if I want something, I just say I want it and either I get it or I don't get it. She's so masterful, so patient, so calm. She always gets what she wants. Oh my God. She's just so good at it. She's just so good at it. And Like literally, well, if you want to, if you want to tell me, if you want to talk to me about feminine energy, how Uma Thurman plays this, plays this character, that's, that's it. That's it. So very interesting. I mean, I feel like I didn't learn that. I guess that's why I didn't care for it. I feel like I didn't learn something from it. I mean, I learned about Uber. I didn't learn about scams. I didn't learn about scam perpetrators and manipulators. I didn't learn more about the MO. So I think that's why I'm just like, meh, but still a good watch. Still interesting watch. Let's talk about bad vegan. This is a documentary about this lady. She had a raw vegan restaurant and then she fell in love with this weird guy who was telling her that she can go into a celestial plane and see the aliens, but he has to give her all this money. So she funneled money away from her restaurant and gave it to this guy. Money that was supposed to pay employees to this guy, investor money to this guy. And her, her restaurant got shut down. And it's called Bad Vegan because... When they finally found her to arrest her and the guy, um, they found chicken wings and pizza in the room. So it's like, I thought you were vegan. And I, even in the documentary, they have some of her friends or supporters like, she didn't eat the chicken. She, she ate the pizza. It was a cheese pizza. But that's not vegan. Cheese is not vegan. Okay. She ate the cheese. It's okay. It's okay. She ate the cheese pizza. I feel like this was very interesting. 
The downside of this documentary is they don't explain very well why she would believe a dude like this. They don't explain the cult of raw veganism. Raw veganism has its own culture. It's very ridiculous. And it's very much, these people think they're on a spiritual pursuit when they eat raw vegan. They're not just doing it because they think it's healthy. They're doing it because they think it will make them pure. It will make their souls light. It will make them spiritually superior. And um, I mean, there there is this sentiment um, in some cultures where you like you feel like your food correlates to how pure you are. You know, it's kind of like some religions, your skin tone or eye color correlates to how pure you are. These people kind of feel that way about their food too. Raw veganism leads people to do water fasting and breatharianism where, where you try to live like without even eating food. You just breathe air and soak in sun and you live. These people kind of, they believe some weird stuff. So I don't think it's far-fetched for her to believe that she can date a guy and enter some celestial plane or whatever the other thing is this girl I think she has depression that's just my arm like armchair psychology speaking um I relate to her in that she probably has been depressed since she was a little girl and same with me um I've had depressive symptoms earliest I can remember is three years old so this, this woman, she's probably very lonely. And, you know, when you find somebody who speaks to something that's so important to you, your spirituality, and, they, and they're loving you, or what they claim is love, yeah, you, I can see how she can get into that. What's really funny is she could have been with Alec Baldwin. It's kind of funny. But instead, at that restaurant, Alec Baldwin met Hillary. You know, the one who likes to call herself Hilaria de España. She likes to lie and pretend that she's from Spain so she can win Latin Latino awards. I always wondered, how does that work? How is somebody from Spain, but they're winning Latino awards? And what I've learned is that They count anybody who speaks Spanish, anybody from a country that speaks Spanish. I'm like, for real? Or anybody from a Latin language country. So sometimes Portugal and Brazil is included in the Latino awards. I'm like, I guess. I don't know. I guess. Sure. (laughs) Sure. I guess maybe that's why these, these artists these days are all of a sudden everybody knows how to speak Spanish. Everybody's singing Spanish on the track. I'm trying to get the Latino awards too. Shoot. <laughs> Dang. Anyway. Um, I just thought that was interesting. So um, this is an interesting watch. If you're into just watching kooky stuff and watching kooky like stuff crumble for kooky, crazy reasons. But I think they could have done a better job helping you get into her head. Now, let's talk about Let's talk about Orgasm Inc. This one. So, oh, it's been up for a month. Okay. We have a pleasure deficit disorder in this country. I think that there is a cure, and that cure is female orgasm. So when this TED Talk came out, I forgot what year it was, but I watched this TED talk and I loved it. You know, she's talking about how lack of pleasure is bad for your health. Women lack pleasure. We're so, women take on a lot of burden. Um, This is why I will never understand. I will never understand like 
There's these guys who who say women live life on easy mode. And I will never comprehend that. I will never comprehend what is easy mode about giving birth (laughs) to everyone and being expected to raise everyone and having like this burden of huge expectation of taking care of a household and being responsible for raising children. You can say all you want. Yeah, the dad's also responsible, but you put the burden of that responsibility, the brunt of it on the woman. I don't know what's easy mode about that. I don't know what's easy mode about having to live your life with people expecting that of you. And being able to take care of the household. Because if you're pregnant and you don't work, people say you're spoiled for being a pregnant woman. If you have, if you just had a baby and you're not going back to work, people say you're spoiled in this country. I don't, I don't know how that's easy mode. I don't know. You could say, well, yeah, there's women who don't, who never give birth. Yeah, there are. But in general, speaking generally, that's the expectation, right? Um, I understand like maybe the expectation of men is to toughen up, be the breadwinner of the family. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know what else. I don't know what else they're complaining about. Um, maybe we could say those are the expectations of men. I just feel like that doesn't compare to uh, literally raising the population. I just, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm missing, but um, she talks about this in her TED talk, like women do all this stuff and never feel pleasure. And a lot of women, they don't know our anatomy, never have an orgasm, all this stuff. So anyway, I was really into it, really into it. It was like female empowerment in a way that we don't discuss. Very tantalizing because it's about women and sex. Okay. That's always going to be tantalizing. Um, I was intrigued by this, like, okay, what do I do? When I go to the website and I just saw it's basically master, master Bation. <laughs> when I saw it's basically Bation, I was like, okay. I mean, I get there, I get, look, again, I get there's a lot of women who don't do that. Do you feel guilty when you do that? Um, it's like not expected. Like, oh, girls don't do that. That's something guys do. Like, I get all those connotations, but also like, yeah, just do it. You can do it. You can just do it. Uh, what really threw me for a loop was when I saw that it was like a spiritual practice, like supposed to be something spiritual. I'm like, girl, it's not that deep. I mean, you can, you, if you want it to be that deep, you can, you know, tantric, tantric relations and all that. But I just kind of felt like it just was giving very much giving um, you're selling dirt in a glass and you're saying it's holy dirt. You know, it's, it's like it's, it's like. I don't know an example of something that's like very common, but you try to make it sound like it's special, but it's not. (laughs) I don't know, but you know what I'm trying to say. This documentary took it, took this brand from just being, oh, something rich people do because they're bored, whatever. If If you like it, you love it. If you like it, I love it for you. We have a pleasure deficit health and wellness and sexuality space. It was all about exploring orgasm, exploring pleasure. I saw a demo of oh supporters whenever they heard about it. Be in a space where I could be real, it was a incredible medicine for me. You Yeah, so I mean, I was like, okay, if you're into that, you're into it. But this documentary showed me that this woman is actually very sick. She's very freaking sick and disgusting. She <laughs> I'm not even going to, you know, let me not even go into all the things that she said. Just know that like, 
I really did not know that she was like this. And, um, and there's a good reason the FBI investigated her and her company. So that's a good one. And I definitely learned like each time I watch these, it just kind of solidifies. I just see common commonalities between, oh, well, she did exactly what Keith Raniere does. Keith Raniere did the same thing. Interesting. Um, I just noticed patterns. My partner asked me like, why do you keep watching this stuff? You know, it's like sick. These people are bad. And I feel like I just, I really appreciate noticing these patterns because this is not just some fringe thing. It's not like, it's not like, oh, wow. Did you hear about that? That cereal on a liver up in Idaho? Wow. It's not like something that's just happening so far away that, you know, knock on wood never happens to me. It's something that happens every day. It's something you can easily get sucked into without realizing it. And noticing the patterns is so important to me. So this brings me to the last one I want to talk about called The Vow. So Oh, Orgasm Inc. is on Netflix. The Vow is on HBO Max. It's two seasons about Nixium. There's a lot of documentaries about Nixium. Even if you have seen all of them, I have seen all of them. I have seen all the documentaries about Nixium. I've listened to the podcast. Still watch this one because you get to hear from people. You get to hear basically all sides of the story. I think they did a phenomenal job. I think they did a great job, you know, and the one criticism I hear is that they gave too much sympathy to Nancy. It's this woman here. People think anyone who's still around just brainwash bitches of Keith. (laughs) But you are. Um, Adult women making decisions back off. She's young and so Nancy. So Nancy is pretty much like she was running this thing. She wasn't running the slave part of it, but she was running the part of it that I would have joined. Had somebody invited me to a free seminar with Nixium, I would have joined. I would have paid money to be a part of this, to learn these techniques. And um, I don't think they were overly sympathetic. I think she just got a lot of screen time as she should because her perspective is very interesting because she's the head of this. And she's also taking us through the stages of grief that everybody else is going through. And we're watching it. We're watching it in real time. I didn't feel overly sympathetic to her. I felt like she got what she deserved. And I did empathize with her. I did feel for her. But it wasn't sympathy. I felt empathy. I felt that I understand her. And I felt that she she got what she deserved. And she also knows she deserves it. In a way, it gave me some form of closure. Like not as if this happened. It doesn't happen to me. But when I found out about Nixium, it triggered the fudge out of me like when I when I found out about what was going on at Nixium the first time I couldn't like for a week I could not listen to any true crime or watch any other scandals I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't like that's how bad that's how bad it got me because it's something that I could see myself falling into. I don't think I would get into that slave part of it, but I definitely would have taken a class. I definitely would have tried to rise up the ranks in class. I may have, I could see myself joining the the other weird seminars. They had weird seminars about 
you know, women getting to see what it's like to be a man and, and the, and just the men just try to degrade you. I feel like if I had signed up for that class, that may have been my last class. Like I could see myself not going to that class anymore, but still doing the Nixium part. I could see how I could see exactly how far and how deeply involved I potentially could have gotten into something like this. And that's why it really hit me because I'm like, oh my God. It's something that you do to help your life. You know, this class that so many people are raving about, so many successful people are raving about. You take this class and if it actually helps you, you're going to keep going and you want to help your life. And as you're trying to help your life, you don't see that it's slowly taking away your life. Slowly. What I know about me is I, you can't, I can't shake off my gut feeling. So if I was in something like this, I would have this gut feeling that I wouldn't ever be able to shake off. Now that I know a lot of the warning signs, if I were to join something like this again, I, w I wouldn't have gone that far into it because I would see the warning signs. The minute I vocalize, you know, so, did you see what so-and-so just did? That doesn't seem right. The minute somebody tries to make excuses for it, I'm out because that's one of the warning signs of a cult where people like against their bitter judgment make excuses for things that are inappropriate or things that are um, useless double standards. So what's interesting is there's a guy. Let me see if he's in this trailer gets off then it's back to just full-blown battle stations yeah this guy sex abuse and even branding it was really the psychological torture of women for decades if he gets okay, off then it's back to just full-blown battle station so i listened to his podcast and you know what's funny he he wasn't in bad vegan but he used to be at that restaurant that bad vegan is about. So I wish I could interview this man. I don't know. What if I turned this into some kind of podcast where we just talk about scams and stuff like that? <sighs> that would be so cool. I don't know. But I would love to interview this man because I have questions. Here's, here's, here's the thing about me. That's what I want to do. I always feel like I have questions that nobody asks, but I feel like I cannot be the only one thinking this. Okay, here's one of the questions I want to ask him. Sir, exactly how many cults have you been a part of? <laughs> I really want to ask him that question. My opinion, raw veganism is a cult, okay? And I, I point out that he used to be a part of that raw vegan restaurant. Just to kind of drive home what I'm trying to say about like the people who are into raw veganism there, it's really a spiritual endeavor for them. They're really trying to seek. They're really seeking something. They're, tr they're seeking something. Um, oh my God, my diaphragm. I've been talking so much. My diaphragm is sore. Oh, okay. So this is an eye opener. This is really eye opening. I really appreciate that they even interviewed the delusional people who are still on the side of Keith Raniere. <sighs> they are quite delusional. But, um, excuse me. So these are the shows, these are the scam shows I've been watching lately that I, I recommend. Um, if you have seen any of these, 
Let me know your thoughts in the comments. You've been hanging out with me for about an hour. I appreciate you. Honestly, I just needed to do something to get my mind off of work because um, I guess like, let's just chat. Let's just have a little chit chat. So I hope you liked the video. Please like it. And then we can have more people be part of our little tribe. But so I made this uh, career transition right? I might post a video about it later where I have completely given up on the concept of loving your work and loving what you do and following your passions <clears throat> for your primary source of income. <clears throat> I follow my passions in my everyday life. How can I work a job that will allow me to go where, wherever my bliss takes me on a daily basis by way of giving me flexibility in my day-to-day -day life as well as financial compensation. And I discovered that working remote as a, as a IT person, a software developer, um, is affording me the closest thing I can get to that that I've ever experienced ever in my life. And so now I'm all about this. And I actually... I actually want to go gung-ho on this. I actually want to get really good at this. I actually want to get really good so that I can, um, you know, get higher paying jobs and even do some work on the side um, and make more money and just um, basically live kind of live a kind of lifestyle where like I'm so good at this that it's an easy job for me to do. I can do it quickly meaning I can take on more, more paying gigs. There's something that's in demand. I'm like, okay, I think this is what I'm going to do. I think I think I finally effing found my career. Is this something I love? No, I don't love it. I just love the money and time freedom it's going to give me. And it's something I know I can do. I know I can learn. I can learn software. I can learn it. So anyway, they're really testing me because um, the guy, this guy senior to me just got promoted. So now I'm the only freaking developer on the team. <laughs> they don't know what I'm doing. So I was kind <clears> of <throat> a little bit freaking out, a little bit. And I just needed to get my mind off of that. And so I decided, you know what, let's make a YouTube video. Let's hang out. Let's chill. Let's vibe. So, you know, like, since we're chatting, it's like about to be 2023. And if you've been following me for some time, you know, this journey I've been through with my depression and anxiety and stuff like that. Um, and it has been now it's been two years since I started my journey with has it been a year and a half with cat treatment. Anyway, I think I'm finally ready to get back into um, this personal development type of stuff that I used to do. I used to make vision boards and all this kind of stuff. I feel like I have a brand new perspective on that kind of stuff, on all the self-help stuff I used to read and the manifestation. My nose is itchy. Manifestation stuff, vision boarding, goal setting. I have a new perspective. Um, it's a, it's a perspective I've always had. It's just that I didn't have the confidence. I felt like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm broke. Let me just do what the book says. And I no longer just do what the book says anymore. I feel like this has been a journey in actually understanding myself, how I work, what motivates me personally. And also, I'm in this place where I finally feel like my shit is getting together. Like, I can get my shit together, finally, for the first time in my life. So, um, <clears throat> I just moved. Um, yay for good paying job. I was able to hire someone to help me unpack a lot of this stuff. But, um... This is my, like my little office. It's like my little, this is my little spot. I'm going to get it nice and organized 
I want to start making this content. Um, when I started this channel, it was about my personal journey to get my life together as somebody with ADHD. And uh, the solution is having time and money. That's the solution to ADHD. So now that I have a little bit of that, just a little bit, just, just a little bit, I'm not where I need to be. But now that I have some of that, I feel like, oh, wow, I can finally <clears throat> start trying to achieve some goals. So so I want to do that. I want to make a vision board video. I want to share some of these goals. I want to, you know, these girls, these really organized girls that like every month, they like update you on how their goals are going and stuff like that. That's the kind of stuff I've been wanting to do. Anyway, hopefully I can do it now. But anyway, that's all I have for today. That's all I have to say. If you have a recommendation of a scam docuseries or fictionalization series, let me know. And if you guys like this, I don't know. It's just always been on my mind to make a podcast about about this kind of thing. Not necessarily a podcast, just make more videos about this kind of stuff. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. At this point, I'm rambling. And um, yeah, let me let me get back to work. Till next time. <laughs>